Welcome to the Student Affairs One Thing, a podcast that asks a simple question of seasoned student affairs professionals. What is one thing you have learned that has helped shape your professional career? I'm your host, Stuart Brown, the developer of studentaffairs.com, one of the most accessed websites by student affairs professionals. On our pages, we have the most cost-effective job posting board, listing hundreds of open student services positions, a wide range of webinars, and a virtual exhibit hall. On today's episode, I am very pleased to welcome Dr. Chris Moody, who is the Executive Director of ACPA, College Student Educators International. He has also served in positions at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Appalachia State, American University, and the University of Memphis. Welcome to the program, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, Chris, what is your one thing? The one thing that keeps coming up in my career path has been the idea of never closing my own doors. You know, you often hear about it, I think, in terms of a sports reference, like you you can't score if you don't shoot. I think Wayne Gretzky famously said that you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. But for me, that's sort of come into play with this idea of never closing my own doors, never thinking about opportunities not being available to me. And some some stories that, you know, quickly come to mind. When I moved in to my college first year residence hall at Wake Forest University, you know, I remember very vividly my RA saying, oh, it's nice to meet you. I think you should be involved. I want to get you involved in hall council. And I thought, me? Wow. wow. Well, he, he probably said that to every single person that checked in because he didn't know me. But at that moment, it was, it was a door, it was an opening that I was like, wow, I, I hadn't thought about myself in a leadership role in that way. So let me, let me apply. Let me throw my name in the hat. You know, a few years down the road, I'm, I'm applying for my first jobs after graduate school, you know, going into student affairs and higher education. And through some of my networks, had developed some relationships and, you know, did the, the job search process and applied for, for jobs that I thought were within my skill set. But I also applied for some jobs that were beyond my skill set. And I remember you mentioned I worked at UNC Chapel Hill. That job application very clearly said you needed three years of post-master's experience before you could apply. But I knew someone who was uh, working there and I said, I'm going to throw my application in and see what happens, right? That idea of not closing my own doors, fully expecting if I wasn't qualified, they would let me know, right? That they wouldn't offer an interview. But because of that network, I did get the interview and I did get the job. So it was really a a moment of clarity for me of, gosh, you know, if I do good work, establish networks, that the world is is really uh, open to me. Fast forward again, a few years later, I decided to apply for a semester at sea, you know, basically a university on a cruise ship. And they said, oh, there's a three-year waiting period before you even get, you know, an interview. Well, it just so happened that was the time period that that 9-11 um, attack was happening and uh, applications were down. And I was on the next, <laughs> the next voyage out of Piraeus, Greece. So this idea of the rules being broken, um, this idea of not limiting my own pathway has been really critical to my success and my experiences in student affairs. And I say all that recognizing that my pathway is not the same as everybody else's and that I've always seen white males like myself in leadership roles. And so uh, that's, not, that's not the case for, uh, understand, for, for people of color and for women who don't necessarily see opportunities and all the doors open for themselves and so I think it's important for people like me, white males, when given an opportunity like this, to share that we need to have more possibility models for women and people of color in leadership so that that idea of all the doors being open and seeing yourself take advantage of opportunities that come your way, you're going to miss some shots. Wayne Gretzky missed some shots. Michael Jordan missed some shots. I've missed some shots, but I was willing to take those shots and I was strategic about the places that I wanted to engage because I think it's important that you be able to deliver once given those opportunities, that you have to be able to not just walk through those doors or enter through those doors, but to be able to do your best. And if you if you go through every door, you can't you can't perform at your best. You're gonna only gonna give half of your effort. So I think selectively choosing the doors you want to go in 
is also an equally uh, critical part of pursuing opportunities and really choosing what's, what feels right for you. I think a couple of things there, you're going back to that experience when you were an incoming freshman at Wake Forest is that you might have that semester next year, the following year, you might have gravitated towards a leadership position, but you had someone. And like you said, I agree with you that RA probably everyone that entered the door. Hi, I think you could do <laughs> because <laughs> part of their script. Yeah, right. You know, it's his self-interest to have a good res hall council. But I think it's important that you have people, whether they're student leaders, staff people that give others an opportunity or to help open that door for them. So it's not always you have to notice the door, but that we can help people open the door and let them decide whether to come through. But I think another thing, and and maybe this wasn't necessarily for you, but you might have people that are going to be very cautious. The door might be open, but do I really want to go through that door? that we can assist people, especially people that we know, maybe on our staffs, we know they can do the job and we can maybe help them or give them a little push through that door. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And that's that's why I think establishing a network within your campus community and beyond your campus community is so critically important with connecting through professional associations like ACPA or, or even a local area, because you want folks and allies and mentors people looking out for you on your own campus. But then there are examples of times where you might need to talk with someone or get some information or run something by someone outside of your campus when when your job security isn't at risk or when you're considering an opportunity that would be a conflict of interest to talk through on your own campus. I think it's really important that you have folks in that network and in that mentoring group like you're talking about to, to be both inside and outside of your workplace. I think also what you're saying is take chances. That whole is to take chances. So the example you gave at Chapel Hill, looking at the job description, you could have just taken yourself out. Now, if it said dean of students and you know you were only the third year in your <laughs> professional career, well, maybe that would be a bit too much of a stretch, but that it's important for us to believe in ourselves. We can do this job, but we have to, like you said, we have to take that shot. So I think that's that's true with people and especially people starting off in their careers, maybe not knowing what to do. And then that other component that you brought in having that network. So you're not out there on your own. Should I do this? Should I proceed? Is there someone from your graduate program, a faculty member or someone that if you're working on a campus that you can go to? I think it's, it's very important to bounce ideas off of. And, and I think it requires a vulnerability and a willingness ahead of time to, to say, I'm going to be told no. I'm going to be told no more than I'm told yes. And, and that's okay, right? That's a part of putting yourself out there and being vulnerable enough ahead of the process so that when you're told no, that it's not necessarily a statement about you, more about, yeah, this just wasn't the right opportunity for me. It leaves me open for the next thing that comes my way. And that's another important point because we never know what's going on behind that closed door. And I've chaired many searches and there might be people that are qualified, but for whatever reason, that wasn't going to be the person. And they were very qualified. And I remember when one of my first job opportunities and later on, I, when I got the job, my supervisor said, you know, Stu, there is you and this other person and you were, it was a dead, dead heat. And the reason you got the job is because you had some AV experience mm-hmm. when you were in college. Mm-hmm. And this person is going to have a little bit of AV component to the position. So I easily could have been rejected for the position, but I, would have, I was still a strong candidate. It was just that little thing that put me over. And I, and I think it's such a critical point, especially right now with what's happening on campuses. You know, we talk about the great resignation and the retirement's happening and the vacant positions and people covering other jobs. You know, a good opportunity for people to look at what skill set they want to develop. You know, if, if people are covering jobs, why wait and have someone come to you and say, hey, I'd like for you to take on this interim job over here. If you know there's an opening, why don't you go to a supervisor and say, hey, I can help with this, this, and this because it's going to benefit me and my skill set and where I want to go. And so I think it's a really great window of time 
to to think strategically to um, show interest in what's happening on campus and if if more work is coming your way anyway be selective and have some some voice in in what comes to you so you might even be having that door opening way too far be all these things but <laughs> but I think the key word there is strategically mm-hmm. that there might be a lot but working things out with your supervisor with your own needs of what I can do to help position yourself for whatever that next door that opens is going to be. Absolutely. It has to, it has to be right fit for you, like in where you are now in the life circumstances and, and sort of alluding to what you were saying, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes of a hiring process, a search process and saying, this is the way that I can contribute right now. It aligns with where I want to go in the future and being really forward with that. You know, if, if the supervisor of the institution says, thanks, not right now, you still have shown a demonstrated interest in supporting and, and being loyal and being helpful in that moment in time. And that's a, that's a muscle memory that is going to last um, beyond that, that one decision. I want to thank you for sharing your one thing. I think that is very important, like you said, unfortunately, especially nowadays, but, but even so is to take chances, take risks, be a little vulnerable and go through that, that door because you don't know where it may, may lead you. I've been speaking with Chris Moody, the executive director of ACPA College Student Educators International. You have been listening to Student Affairs One Thing, a podcast that asks a simple question of seasoned student affairs professionals. What is one thing you have learned that has helped shape your professional career? I've been your host, Stuart Brown, the developer of studentaffairs.com, one of the most accessed websites by student affairs professionals. I hope you will join us next time for another episode of the Student Affairs One Thing. 